Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osuri. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Fiji faces major milk shortage. 30 rewarded for being successful under 30. And Charlie Mbamba told to undergo tests. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. The recent outbreak of brucellosis and tuberculosis amongst cattle has had its first major casualty, with that now being confirmed that there is a major shortage of milk in the country. This has resulted in the price hike of locally produced milk and associated products, with the VG Cooperative Dairy Company Limited saying it's fighting a battle. Consumers say they are feeling the pinch after price increase, with the farmers saying the situation doesn't seem to be getting any better. Kritika Kumar reports. Having lost over 6,000 cattle by May due to the worldwide spread of brucellosis and bovine tuberculosis has sent alarm bells ringing and milking decreasing. About uh, approximately half of the cattle has been removed from the farms, with leading the production fall from 9 million to 4.5 to 5.2 million, ranging at 5.2 million. The disease is one of the biggest impacts, and uh, there may be other internal factors which may be also leading or contributing to this. The company tasked with supplying milk to local producers says the production of fresh milk has been on decline for about seven years, and this recent outbreak has surely not helped get the cattle home. The production has gone down from the 2011 to 2012 production from 9 million litres to 5.2 million litres, and this impact is a very bad impact to the dairy industry. The Northland Farmers Cooperative says its members just cannot milk enough to supply the factory. At the moment, the total milk supply from the farm to the factory is about 11,500 litres a day. And uh, this figure used to be 33,000, 35,000 litres. So... So the total intake is about one third. This whole saga has resulted in the consumers now having to fork out a little more than usual for local milk products. A packet of powdered milk used to cost around $5.45 but is now costing $6.95 while a packet of liquid milk is now going for around $2.70. I think it's uh, too expensive for some low, uh, low income earners in Fiji. Myself, we use milk every day and uh, the prices that's really going up, it's really affecting us. Um, and also, I'm sure not only my family, other families out there with other partners that are using milk, rare dairy milks, are the ones that are really suffering. Well, as for mothers, uh, we have babies at home and I think it's a bit expensive because of the prices increase. And on that note, we now join our journalist Kritika Kumar live with more details. Kritika, are you able to tell us how the farmers have been affected in all of this? Jackie, with the removal of uh, kettles from the farms because of the two diseases has led to the increased cost of production in running the farm. Around 50% of the kettles have been removed from the farms and it has become difficult to manage and maintain the farms. The Agriculture Ministry is undertaking embryo implant in cattle to help restock the farms. The embryo that has been implanted is of high yielding cattle which will weigh three times more than the normal breed. The cattle will also produce 25 litres of milk per day, which will improve the dairy industry. Jackie. Now, before we leave you for the night, one last question. Were there any other reasons contributing to the shortage of milk? Well, yes, Jackie, the expiry of land leases is another issue. Meanwhile, the Northland Farmers Cooperative Chair has confirmed that nine farmers' leases are close to the renewal. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Kritika. 30 individuals who are members of the 30 Under 30 program were formally recognized today for their contributions. The program is for rising young leaders identified in a nationwide campaign for their leading roles in various sectors. Kuroi Tandulala reports. 
Dropping out of school in her teen years, this Rocky Rocky woman was determined to make a difference in her community by establishing her own business. I hope that it would inspire more and my background's really, I don't have a degree, I don't have um, merits, but I've got the brains to do it and it's just like a lot of people give up along the way because they think that's it. And so I hope to inspire those who think that that's all that. For Deepika Darshani, she hopes to use her leading role to bring more attention to the ongoing issue of stray dogs in the country. I feel that animals deserve a lot more care and concern from us humans because they don't have a voice. They can't really voice out when they're sick, when they're in pain. And looking at the amount of stray dogs, which is an issue right now, I think more work, more effort needs to be put into that. And SPC is doing a great job and I wanted my contribution to go to it. Web engineer and part-time lecturer Alvindra Dart made his contribution in support of the St. Christopher Home, which provides support to young people. Maybe some of the under, unprivileged youths from St. Christopher's home, if we help them by just donating, they could be leaders of tomorrow as well. With more than 60% of the population are under the age of 40, investment in our youth is vital for the country. Koroi Tandulala, FBC News. Energy Fiji Limited will take action against those who damage their public assets. Chief Executive Hasmuk Patel says they will take appropriate action to recover repair costs. In particular, Patel is urging installers, building constructors and relevant approving authorities to adhere to the Electricity Act. Patel says machinery and people too close to EFL overhead power lines will cause flashovers resulting in serious burns and or injuries and even electrocution. He says digging on or near road reserves can also prove dangerous. A permit to dig is required for any excavations in the vicinity of power cables. EFL will work with police and relevant authorities to investigate any reports of damage. The inaugural Pacific Skills Summit begins tomorrow at the University of the South Pacific. The summit is the brainchild of the Pacific Skills Partnership, which teamed up with the University of the South Pacific and the Australia Pacific Training Coalition to host the event designed to look at ways of addressing skills challenges faced by the region. Maggie Boyle reports. President of Nauru and Pacific Islands Forum Chair Byron Wonga as one of the key drivers of the Pacific Skills Summit. My vision for the Pacific Skills Partnership was to inspire and stimulate the creation of new, innovative and practical approaches that will strengthen the Pacific Skills pool. We all aspire to a region that is inclusive, productive and sustainable. In partnership with USP and APTC, the first Pacific-led initiative is expected to end with an action plan addressing the region's needs. The university's mission is grounded in responding to the skill needs of the region. Like the university, the partnership was envisaged as a Pacific-led vehicle to seek out and engage in solutions to the skills challenges of our region. And its, its potential for a collaborative effort across the region to reform and even transform uh, our skills development systems at all levels to meet our current and future needs. The two-day Pacific Skills Summit will begin tomorrow, turning into action the deliberations of more than 300 attendees addressing the skills need in the region. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The Chief Magistrate has issued an order for Charlie Mbamba to undergo a psychiatric evaluation to determine if he is fit to take a plea and participate in legal proceedings. The court has ordered he be presented at St. Giles Hospital for assessment. Bamba has been charged with one count of making a false declaration. It is alleged that between August 1st and October 15th last year, he made false statements on social media by publishing falsified voter lists and other false information related to the voter lists which he knew to be false on Facebook. The case will be recalled on July 15th when the review of the psychiatric evaluation will be presented to the court. Up ahead, farmers face cane cutter issues. And it's about to get all techy at the FBC Tech Show. Details after the break.
Bula, nevan go malaka ile loma, go ngai na kasi, ondo ba rong na mbula fe, na bando ya na sere. Oya o ba shit sai sai lambasa, ya ondo telita ile ba rong na mbula fe, na bando ya na sere. Bu ya vetu meli, ako na tau no hinga toka, telita kina na ba rong na mbula fe, na bando ya na sere. Ewa na na mbula fe, na bando ya na sere na mbula. Na eva ngo fanya na tau ni ngo singa toka, kita ondo telita kana mbula fe, na bando ya na sere. Bula fe, na bando ya na sere. Sugarcane farmers in the Western Division have resorted to family members to help cut cane during this harvesting season. This as the farmers try to counter the issue of shortage of manpower and finding people as cane cutters. Philip and Icaso has more. Despite facing a shortage of cane cutters, some farmers are now thinking outside the box. I have just gotten some of my family members from the village to help me cut cane. I know a lot of people don't like this hard labor, but us, this is our bread and butter. For others, they're ensuring they deliver their cane on time to the Lotoka mill without any issues. Uh, I have harvested half of my cane and will harvest the rest later in the season. It will be more than last year's harvest, which I'm happy about. There's also been more cooperation from cane farmers and lorry drivers in relation to the weight restriction limit. Also, the FSC is calling on cane farmers to be more consistent in their cane deliveries for this season. Philip and I, Castle, FBC News. Only two days remain for Fiji's first ever FBC tech trade show. The final touches are being added to the event, which will have all things technology. Catherine Krishna with more details. If you are a tech freak, this show is definitely for you. But even if you're not into the tech side of things, this show has other means of impressing you. There's so much to expect in terms of technology. Eh? Um, not only that, we have lucky gate takers as well. Uh, uh, we're giving away $500 worth of shopping vouchers with jacks for, the, for people coming in. And not only that, we are doing daily draws, uh, the weekend for two at uh, the Pearl South Pacific. Director of HP Tech, Bhavik Katri, says they specialize in the importation and sales of electronic gadgets and people can expect a good display from them. At this time we are focusing more on car oriented products and uh, we are trying to do a very different setup. We have, not, we have never done this in uh, any other trade show and we are doing it in this one. The FBC Tech Trade Show starts right here at the FMF Gymnasium on Thursday from 10 a.m. 48 companies will be showcasing their products at the show. Kathleen Krishna, FBC News. Non-commissioned officers from the Fiji Police Force in Vanua Levu are undergoing a three-day management and leadership training aimed at improving their overall conduct and service. Opening the training this morning, Police Chief of Operations ACP Martin Ongio Levu says a lot of responsibility lies on the shoulders of these officers and they have to step up their game. Police Chief of Operations ACP Martin Ongio Levu is serious about high-ranking officers playing their part in the overall operations of the Fiji police force. The increase in complaints on simple issues like lack of feedback points back to an absent manager. A manager who does not know what to do or how to manage his team. If you do not want the extra workload, do the honorable thing and give it to someone more deserving. According to ACP Ngyo Levo, a recent audit of the Fiji police force found that the biggest downfall is the failure of most to follow the basics of policing. Many were dishonest in their work, some totally disregarded systems and processes, and others not present in their leadership capacity. The three-day training, which starts today, aims to cut these out. Do you want to be an asset or liability in this organization? So let us all step up another gear. Build the momentum of operations. We need strong and capable leaders. NCOs are officers ranked from compo right down to sergeant. They have been reminded that the higher the rank, the more the responsibility. So as NCOs, be present and be more involved. The officers are from police stations and police posts in the Kaunrobe, Boa and Madhuata. The training ends on Wednesday. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. 
The Global Navigation Satellite System allows Fiji to access pre and post disaster images for effective emergency response and recovery. Speaking at the GNSS workshop in Suva today, Minister for Disaster Management and Meteorological Services Chonio Sumate says it helps in real time prediction of possible critical situations. GNSS is currently being used in a wide range of sectors, including but not limited to mapping and surveying, monitoring of environment, agriculture, and natural resource management, disaster warning, and emergency response, aviation, maritime, and land transportation. And Jamie will be joining us later with sports. But first up, hello to Rachel. Another brand new week in the business world. And we're talking biscuits tonight. Yes, Jackie, indeed we are. So what's the crunch behind that? Okay, well, crunch indeed, because our popular breakfast crackers are going through a change. And Jackie will have more on that shortly. Mm -hmm. But coming up after the break, Fiji Airways has a long way to go, says Minister. And in going Fiji, as mentioned, our favorite breakfast crackers goes brown. Stay with us. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Yeni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coroco, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. Bula, my name is Mariva. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Leading business tonight, Fiji's civil aviation has a lot to achieve, says Minister A.R. Said Kiyum. As Fiji, Fiji Airways continues to punch above its weight, the government says there needs to be more coordinated effort from other stakeholders in the sector. Ali Kimbia with the details. More development plans are in place for the Fiji Airways as government continues to develop the aviation industry to meet world-class standards. We've got a lot more to achieve. We obviously are in a very exciting period also. We've got the A350s uh, coming online uh, in November and December of this year, which gives a lot of cap capacity and capability. With a four-star rating to its name, the Fiji Airways is adamant they will continue to grow with more opportunities in the world market. Said Kiyong says company is in a good space and criticism has spurred the airline. In respect of the numerous changes we made a few years ago, you know, some people condemned it at that point in time. They did not obviously get the vision, did not see long term, did not think you know, or look beyond their noses. And these type of decisions, the tough decisions were made a few years ago, is obviously now paying dividends. It's a, a journey of continuous improvement. So we, we've focused on continuous improvement. There will be moments that we, we, we fail in service, we address it and we improve. The Civil Aviation Minister says a lot of work is happening behind the scenes to ensure the sustainability of operations of Fiji's island in the sky. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. It's the start of yet another week and it's all about the company's shares from the money markets. Here's Gary from HFC Bank. Thank you. Let's review the action on our local stock market last week. Over 161,000 shares exchanged hands in 32 transactions. Total consideration amounted to more than $188,000. 11 listed entities recorded market activity with eight noted share price changes. Atlantic and Pacific packaging shares recorded growth of five cents and concluded the week at $1.60. Amalgamated telecom holding shares dropped by eight cents to $3.20, while Communications Fiji Limited shares were up five cents at $5.60. Fiji Cash Insurance shares were up five cents and ended the week at $2.05. Contiki Finance shares fell by two cents to $1, while Toyota Social shares improved by five cents and settled at $11.50. Fijian Holding shares increased by three cents to settle at $1.92, while shares in BSP convertible notes rose by a dollar to close the week at $21. Subsequent to the various share price changes, the overall market capitalization slightly decreased 
by 0.59% and ended the week at $3.62 billion. That's a wrap from our local stock market. Inaka. Thanks, Gary. On to today's exchange rates as it was set this morning. A mixed day for the Fiji dollar. It fell against the Chinese yuan, the U.S. greenback, but made some gains against the Aussie and New Zealand dollar. And also it rose against the euro, but stiff slightly against the PNG, Kina, and the Japanese yen. On to the commodities market. Oil prices were on the rise, nearing $58 a barrel. Gold was down at 1406 per ounce, and silver followed soon closing at 1534 an ounce. And in Going Fiji tonight, our famous breakfast crackers is undergoing a change. FMF Foods Limited has made a new move in producing whole meal breakfast crackers. FMF Operations Manager Vinod Bosley says the new product will help meet growing demand for whole meal products in the fight against non-communicable diseases. Bosley says the new product is currently available in the local markets and will soon be exported. He says they are also working on other healthier FMF products in the help against the fight against NCDs. And we found that we should come up with some of the healthier concepts in the food. And we thought there is a, uh, already a product like whole meal bread in the market and we need to just say that okay can we come with a product like uh, the same thing which we say is a whole meal breakfast crackers and which is having a, a healthier uh, plus points like we have a high fiber which gives us the boost, the energies. And that's it from business for tonight. Sports is up next. And Jamie, how good was game to your state of origin last night? Oh, my goodness. Tell me about it. The Blues were on fire. I know, right? And that performance by Maloney was absolutely outstanding. I personally can't wait for game three. Yep, definitely can't wait for that either. Up ahead in sports, though, the genius of Brad Fittler reaps reward in game two of origin. And hill training boosts rewa footballers. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch FM. Mitch FM is hot. Singatoka Mitch FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mitch FM rocks in Lombasa. I'm Sona Min. I'm Sodi Jackson. Mitch FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Bubble Single Line. Mitch FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Pritika from Jackson, Nasori. I love listening to Mitch FM here in Nasori. Mitch FM is hot. Mitch FM is hot. New South Wales coach Brad Fittler was left looking like a genius as his side humiliated Queensland 38-6 in a history-making thumping in Perth last night. Meanwhile, his Maroons counterpart Kevin Walters was left looking like a broken man as the two teams head into the decider next month in Sydney. Real football team coach Peter Rambo says hill runs at Ngio Levu in Nabuso Nausori has contributed a lot to the fitness of his players. He made the revelation following their 1-0 win over Nishinu in the Vodafone Premier League yesterday. Faria Begum has more. Rambo says that players' fitness was a key to improvement and running down the hill has come in as a booster in that area. So we have done that for a couple of weeks. We can just see a big fitness pick up from the players. So it's a, um, you know, running down at uh, Ngeolia was a very good thing for us. So I think next week and I think that's where we're going to be doing as well. Rewa goal scorer in their match against Nasinu Chosaya Sela praised the team Unity, which led to getting the much needed three VPL points. It was uh, great, so though we were tight, but we gave uh, our hearts out uh, to And thanks for the, for the boys for giving their best. Rewa now stands sixth with 10 points on the Vodafone Premier League points table. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. Former Penrith Panthers winger Ratuluke Nandurutalo will captain the Fiji men's and nines league team to next month's Pacific Games in Samoa. Nandurutalo recently played for the Fiji residents in the Tri-Series against Tonga and has been getting a lot of support from residents captain Apukuki Tavondi, who is also in the squad for Samoa. 
Meanwhile, the team was the last to be registered into Fiji's delegation to the Pacific Games following some financial issues with participation levies, which have now been cleared, much to the delight of Coach Wulon on the Kuitonga. It is a great relief in a sense that uh, we have been working hard from uh, November, from November till now. now. So to hear that news uh, from our main office, it is really um, encouraging. And it is, I mean, it is a good news to the boys because they have been working very hard. Fijian middleweight boxing champion Sebastian Singh is ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Siliban in Hawaii. The two fighters face each other in the battle in the West Boxing Rumble this weekend. Well known for his quick jab, Singh is looking fit and confident to retain his title. Other bouts will include the super middleweight title fight between Abe Chand and Tomungonovo. The event takes place this Saturday at Prince Charles Park from 5 p.m. Nawai is a forward-coming fighter. He loves to rumble and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the same. I like to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and exchange shots. And uh, this fight, what I can say is the crowd is going to get their money worth, you know. Every, I think for the past probably five or six years, the fight that they'll see on the 29th, Fiji Boxing hasn't seen that kind of fight before. Eight athletes are in Australia preparing for the Oceania Championship in Townsville. Banuve Tambakaldoro, Malakai Kaiwalu, Chantel Lockington, Kameli Soundundua, Petro Vetango Maki, Mustafa Fall, Anakalu Dava, and Vilimaina Naituku begin competing this Wednesday. Following the Oceania Championships, these athletes participate at the Oceania Permit Meet in Lautoka next week. The meet will double as a World Championship qualifier. Host France beat Brazil two goals to one to reach the Women's World Cup quarterfinals. This was one of the most exciting matches of the tournament with the winning goal scored deep into extra time. Staying with the World Cup, England booked their quarterfinal spot with an easy 3-0 victory over Cameroon. Cricket now and South Africa have been knocked out of the World Cup as Pakistan inflicted a fifth defeat on the struggling Proteus to keep their semi-final hopes alive. In the must-win meet, the 1992 champions won by 49 runs to register just their second win in six games. Well, I think it's safe to say the future of Fijian rugby is in very capable hands. Next up, Harry Potter is going mobile, and you can get all the details in new media after the break. That's it for me. My name is Nan, I'm from Bualumbuwa. Freni North is famous, Radio Fiji 2 is also famous in all places. Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country. I like to listen to Radio Fiji 2 to listen to Radio Fiji 2. I'm Uncle King, I'm from Radio Fiji 2. I'm from Rugby 5. I'm from Radio Fiji 2. 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 the time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. The weekend weather had us on cloud nine, all sunny with clear blue skies and we had more of that today. Let's see what it looked like around the country. Now taking a look in the west, clear skies and warm temperatures with Ba and Lotoka topping it all. Eastwards from Pak Habarasiva, mainly blue skies with just a little cloud. And up North Lambasa, Savu Savu, Taviuni and Rotuma are all on one page having similar sunny spells. Of course, we can expect cool temperatures overnight somewhere in the low 20s. At sea, easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate seas. For the tides, high tide at 12.16 a.m. with low tide at 6.18 a.m. Sunrise at 6.36. For tomorrow, some morning cloud with sunshine taking charge from midday. Tomorrow's temps, all centers can expect temperatures to peak around 30, perhaps a bit more in the west. And looking further on to Wednesday, dry and warm conditions expected. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. And with ferry transport being a hot topic right now in Fiji and Pulse today, we asked, would you take a ferry to beat the rush hour traffic? Yeah, sure, I will consider it. Because, uh, like, uh, I think it will be quicker. 
because uh, when we travel in bus, it sometimes take time because some of the buses are slow. So if it will be quicker, then I'll travel all the time. Uh, take bus. Come by bus because I'm not staying in Nasori. I'm staying in Winbuku. You know? There's 150 for a trip from uh, Suba to Nusuri. Well, those people is uh, from staying in the village, you know, from Rewa. That's when it's better for them to come by, you know, because of the traffic in the morning in Purnivia. I think it will be faster than the bus. Absolutely. I will use ferry services because it's fast and I don't have to face traffic congestion. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Fiji faces major milk shortage. 30 rewarded for being successful under 30 and Charlie Mbamba told to undergo tests. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question segment last week we had asked, should municipal councils take a lead role in capturing stray dogs? 72% said yes. This week we're asking, would you consider taking a ferry to escape peak time traffic? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day takes us back to the weekend. This was almost close to perfect setting at the ANZ Stadium on Saturday as the provincial rugby finals were played. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. Follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. Nambula FM, number two and series. We have the Meli, Aquana Tau no Hinga Toka, Talita Kina Navarro, Nambula FM, number two and a series. One of the two, Nambula FM, number two and a series, number one. Nayango Fanny and a town of Singa Toka, Kita and the Talita Kanambula FM, number two and a series. Bula FM, number two and a series.